Who would want to play a mana-hungry, leather-wearing, sorry excuse for a class? Everyone, right? Well, actually, nobody. According to death logs on World of Warcraft Classic Hardcore, Shaman is the least popular class when it comes to hardcore and is also the least likely to reach level 60 without dying, which is why you should play it. Most people think Warrior is the hardest because it starts off the hardest. According to the death log, Warrior is the class that is least likely to even make it to level 10, right next to Warlock. But if you're looking for a challenge to getting to level 60, you should actually be playing Shaman. It's the class that just doesn't make it there. And I want to share eight important tips for succeeding as a Shaman, and it's not the obvious stuff that everyone else is talking about. So why is Shaman the worst class for hardcore? And why is it the least likely to hit level 60? Well, Shaman progressively gets weaker and weaker as they level. For one, their level 40 enhancement talent, Stormstrike, leaves you feeling more disappointed than when Blizzard added the new WoW token. There's a big reason why Shaman choose to actually respect to Elemental at level 40. This leads to drinking more often, between poles and you're wearing leather up until level 40 when you could finally learn to equip mail. So you won't have much armor when you first switch to elemental. Not only that, but while most classes get parry at level 10, shaman need to go deep into the enhanced tree and pick it up where it is near the bottom. Parry is incredibly powerful, not only to negate the entirety of a melee attack, but also you get parry haste after you parry. So it's actually going to help your DPS as well. Not only that, but shaman also struggle with mana requiring very intelligent usage of the five second rule to minimize your downtime to get your mana regenerating. A lot of the talents that were added in TBC and Wrath, of course, aren't going to be there in Classic. Things that made your shocks cost less mana, things that made you more mana efficient, they're just not in the game. Now, why is Shaman secretly OP? Well, on the plus side, according to the death log, Shaman are the best class at reaching level 10 successfully. This is because of their incredibly powerful rock biter weapon enhancement, which gives a ridiculous amount of attack power early on, something like 70 attack power at rank two. And it is actually the best in slot weapon enhancement for consistent DPS and PvE throughout the entire leveling process. That's right, it's even better than Wind Fury because Wind Fury can proc and it will proc when a mob is near death and it will overkill it, which is a huge waste of DPS and it's just not as efficient and consistent as the persistent power of Rockbiter. Not only that, but there are plenty of strong weapons available to the Shaman, whether from vendors or quests, to allow the Shaman to quickly and easily build up their power. Not only that, but there's actually a pretty high skill cap if you choose to play Shaman. Rockbiter generates a lot of threat, so you need to switch to Flame Tongue if you're in a group with a tank. Not only that, but Fire Nova Totem and Magma Totem actually generate a high amount of threat in a short range around them when cast. Can actually be used to pull aggro off yourself in tricky situations. And of course, Stone Claw Totem does this much better, offering a pulsing taunt every few seconds, but it has a 30 second cooldown, so you need to be careful not to rely on it too much. You also get Stone Claw Totem and Earthbind Totem really early on, which is another reason why Shaman is just really strong early game, and we can see that of course again in that death log data of course tremor totem is another incredible totem and lifesaver honestly if you're running wailing caverns use this totem because it can get you and your party members out of sleep which the druids in there love to cast also gets you out of fear and charm for future encounters too so it's definitely an amazing totem especially so in vanilla where there are much less ways to get out of these crowd control effects and believe me if you if anyone sees a shaman in their group for any hardcore encounter they're gonna be like yes because you're gonna bring your totems they're gonna be so happy shaman is just such a powerful utility class in vanilla classic wow now another thing that i actually think is fun about shaman is the class quests at level four you get the earth totem 10 you get fire 20 is is water and 30 is air i love these quests so i do them right away you can also just do them intelligently you know everyone complains oh we have to walk so much yes they involve traveling around a lot but you can actually just do the quests where you're going in order to make the most out of your journey for example the water quest has you going all the way to hillsbrad foothills you know pick up the flight path to Undercity, Silver Pine Forest, Hillsbrad. Do the Elixir of Pain and Suffering quests while you're there. You're basically the perfect level for it. You know, and again, don't forget those flight paths. That would really suck. <laughs> and by the way, at level 20, you have Ghost Wolf. So you have 40% increased move speed. It's really not that big of a deal. Unless you don't get Ghost Wolf, then it's going to really be painful. Remember to keep your hearth in the barrens while you do that so that when you're done with those quests and gathering the water from the well, you can just easily hearth back and turn in. And uh, I definitely think it's worth doing because again, your totems are extremely powerful. Your group will love you for it and so on. When it comes to using these extra totems that you earn, I'll admit that in most cases when playing solo, I usually just drop a searing totem and that's it. Unless I'm fighting a camp of monsters and will be there for a while, then I'll drop my other totems. But depending on my level, I'll also drop healing stream, strength of earth, and grace of air totems if there's multiple pulls, right? And there's a really great macro for dropping all your totems in vanilla since you can't drop them all at once until wrath. So the macro is a cast sequence macro that changes depending on if you're in a group. So you've got basically this macro right here. I'm not going to 
not going to read through it. But while we're on the topic of macros, I also want to share with you the start attack shock macro. You literally push it. It's going to give you a shock attack and then you're just going to start your auto attack. So just one button. It's perfect. And depending if you want to pull out your one hander and shield at a moment's notice and swap back to your two hander when you're done, this macro is an absolute must to switch between the two. Just replace the names of the weapons and shield with whatever you're using and it's a spammable macro to switch back and forth. The reason I like this macro is because you never know if you're going to get a lucky one hander that somehow does more DPS than your two hander and it makes much more sense to switch because you'll get the armor and block of your shield and you'll be able to keep that high DPS weapon as well. Also, maybe you want to switch, throw on your shield really quick before you pop a heal for that extra armor. If you really want to, could help keep you alive. And because we're using a shield, I actually recommend this, this uh, talent tree, right? We're going to get five out of five shield specialization because the alternative is basically inconsequential, right? A little bit more mana. Three out of five thundering strikes next because we want to be able to get ghost wolf with our other two points immediately at level 20. We can get it down to one second. It can't get instant cast in vanilla. Two out of two improved ghost wolf. One out of one two-handed axes and maces. If you get a lucky drop from a dungeon or open world, you want to be ready to use it. Leveling the weapon skills, especially painful as shaman, but sometimes the weapon is so good it's actually worth it. Something like corpse maker. Two out of three improved lightning shield to increase your damage. The spell is actually the most mana efficient spell shamans have, so make sure to use this as often as you can, being mindful of the five second rule for mana regeneration. Five out of five flurry, one of the strongest talents in the enhanced tree. This actually makes agility more important than strength, so it's that powerful, since more crits mean more flurry procs and therefore more damage. One out of one parry, of course, we were just talking about parry. It's a huge talent. Most classes get this early, but we need to put a talent point into it. Again, it's going to mitigate our melee damage that we take. Also increases our attack speed after we parry, thanks to parry haste. Three out of three elemental weapons, because this will greatly increase the attack power of your rock biter weapon, which is, again, more consistent than wind fury. So I recommend using rock biter throughout leveling. Finish off three out of three improved lightning shield, then get five out of five weapon mastery for 10% more damage with weapons, and then finish off with one out of one storm strike. Now, storm strike really isn't what it is in future expansions. It's really disappointing in vanilla. It just gives you an extra attack and costs like 20% of your mana, one fifth with a 20 second cooldown. So once you hit level 40, it's recommended you switch to elemental. It's going to be much faster leveling. You don't have to. It's just what people recommend. And by the way, you should be collecting elemental gear while you're leveling so that you're ready for this transition. If you didn't do that, maybe you should just stay enhanced, right? Now the spec to go at level 40 is full elemental, getting five out of five convection, five out of five concussion for reduced mana cost, increased damage done, three out of three call of flame to buff your fire totem damage, five out of five call of thunder for 6% additional crit, one out of one elemental focus. This is going to help with your mana. I have the storm three out of three helps you cast without pushback, one out of one elemental fury. This is the exact as warlock ruin talent. You get 100% more critical strike damage. <gasps> Boom! Two out of two storm reach. This gives you six extra yard range to your lightning spells, which is awesome. You want to basically be max range when you start a fight. Five out of five lightning mastery is a must. You get one second off your lightning spells and then one out of one elemental mastery makes your next fire frost or nature spell guaranteed critical strike and cost no mana. Perfect for chain lightning because that's what's really going to cost you. And then once you hit level 41 onwards, I recommend the restoration sub spec for its incredible talents. Nature's Guidance gives 3% hit, which is so awesome. And Title Mastery gives you 5% crit chance with lightning spells and healing. So there's some really good stuff in the resto tree for our elemental build. Even Enhanced should go resto sub spec. Now the order to get talents is 5 out of 5 Title Focus, 5 out of 5 Totemic Focus, helps with mana, 3 out of 3 Nature's Guidance, 1 out of 1 Totemic Mastery, 1 out of 5 Healing Focus, because where else are you going to put that talent point into making your Ankh <laughs> better? Like it doesn't make any sense, right? And 5 out of 5 Title Mastery. Now, what's cool about this build too is that you can heal dungeons because you're in caster gear as elemental. You could purposefully build a melee cleave group if you wanted to to make sure you get all the caster loot. Remember in hardcore though, you can't spam dungeons since you can only do one dungeon uh, at a given day until you reach max level. So keep that in mind as you look at items to get. Speaking of which, let's talk about shaman weapon progression. This is something that I love talking about. One of my absolute favorite things about World of Warcraft. And honestly, this is why I think you should play a shaman. This weapon progression is so fun and it's seamless. Now, a lot of you may ask, what's better, one-handed plus shield or two-handed? And I have found two-handed to be better almost always unless you find a one-hander that has more DPS. Private server realms had some bugs, made flame tongue do too much damage. That's why everyone thinks one-handed shield is probably better, but honestly, two-handed is better. Basically, just use whatever has the most DPS is my advice, right? If, a, if, a, if you have a one-hander that does more DPS than a two-hander, you should definitely just use the one-hander. The argument is that having a shield gives you more sustain since you take less damage, but you'll also take less damage if you just kill stuff faster. So I've seen spreadsheets and whatnot. And uh, if you really dive into the data, two-handed is the best until level 40 where elemental takes over. Anyways, the first weapon I seek out from the start is the pr 
primitive walking stick. This is, this weapon is a quest reward from the quest Vile Familiars in the Durotar starting area. Of course, you'll only get this if you're Orc or Troll, or if you went all the way over to Durotar as a Tauren, probably don't recommend that. Now, one really important thing I do when I leave the starting area in Durotar or Bloodhoof, when you get to Bloodhoof Village, you're gonna wanna make sure you at least have five silver, four copper, because the next weapon to purchase in Senjin Village or Bloodhoof Village costs that much, and it's actually really strong. I hold off on learning any new skills because I want to make sure I can afford it and that weapon is called the walking stick. We've upgraded. This weapon almost doubles your DPS on your weapon, so it's totally worth it. With Rockbiter Enhancement, you're actually like two to three shotting enemies. You can just open up with Earth Shock and Auto Attack enemies down really fast. It's a blast. It's so much fun. It's shocking. We're gonna go after the Blemish Wooden Staff next. You can actually get this from completing a two-part quest chain just south of Ogremar, which is called Winds in the Desert, where you need to collect four supply bags. Then after that, the next quest is called Securing the Lines. This is a kill quest. Kill some harpies, you get this amazing staff. And the staff is perfect to finish off your Razor Hill quests, etc. Pick up whatever you want to do and then head to the Barons and the next weapon to get is called Cauldron Stirrer. This is actually something you can do immediately. You know, the quest will be orange to you. You can still do it anyways. You can get this by collecting spores from the Oasis, which is northwest of the Crossroads. It starts in the Crossroads from Apothecary Helbrim near the Flight Master. You really don't have to fight anything, but you might aggro a centaur or something like that. Just gather the four mushrooms and then head to Crossroads, turn in the quest, pick up the next one, go to Thunder Bluff, get your Cauldron Stirrer. This thing will last you a while. It is a really awesome staff until you complete basically the main primary quest chain of the barons, which is, you know, starts with killing the plane striders, then kill the Zevra, so on. At the end of that quest chain, which is super long, Ichiaki, etc., you get the Wind Rider staff. This is a, a small upgrade, but while you're doing those quests, might as well go pick it up. An upgrade's an upgrade. Now, finally, the last thing that you're gonna wanna go after in the barons is the crescent staff. The most obvious thing. It's the it's the best thing in the barons. You have to do the quest leaders of the fangs so you're gonna have to do a wailing caverns run for this it's actually a big upgrade from anything else you can find within the baron so absolutely recommend you pick up the crescent staff from there you can get small upgrades here and there but really the big upgrade is going to be found in scarlet monastery my ideal pick for you would be loxy's training stick it's really cool it gives plus 60 attack power when fighting beasts and if you're a troll you also get five percent increased damage against beasts so definitely grab this staff head to stv you're gonna have a great time it's going to last you quite a bit of time just killing all those animals with Loxy's training stick. Now, other options besides Loxy's training stick, because it does, in fact, have a low drop rate, unfortunately, and you can only run dungeons once a day. You could go for Corpse Maker, level 29 axe dropped by Overlord Ram Tusk and RFK. You can get Ravager from Harad and Scarlet Monastery Armory. You can get Mograine's Might from Scarlet Commander Mograine and Scarlet Cathedral. Now, keep in mind, those aren't staves, these alternatives I've listed out, so it's going to have a long weapon skill training session attached to it, which is not fun at all and very time consuming. So honestly, personally, I would just stick to staves all the way until you respec Ellie. Or if you're planning on going enhance the entire way, just stay with staves the entire way. You can get like resurgence rod from Maradon. Stay with staves, you know, leveling weapon skills sucks, especially as a shaman. And while you are in Scarlet Monastery, if you are planning on going elemental, there are weapons there that will help you when you respec elemental. Things like Hypnotic Blade and Aegis of the Scarlet Commander or Illusionary Rod. These are great for spellcasting. Once you're Ellie, you should also pick up Zumra's Vexing Cane from uh, ZF. This is a two-handed staff for casters who need an increase to spell damage. Gives you Int and 21 magic damage and healing. And from Moradon, like I was saying, if you're Enhanced, you can get the Resurgence Rod. If you're going Ellie, you can get Charstone Dirk and Gizlock's Hypertech Buckler, which have MP5 and Intellect, so it's really nice to have that as a caster. Not to mention, having a shield as Elemental is just awesome. So, with with the weapon progression out of the way, let's talk about the best race for Shaman in Classic WoW. Of course, Shaman is a Horde-only class you can play, so let's talk about the Horde races. We got Orc and Troll. I would say both have really big advantages. The huge stun resist of Orc can save your life in both PvE and PvP if you're doing a Makara, along with Blood Fury giving melee attack power. I would say makes Orc the best choice if you plan on playing Enhance for an extended period of time, especially in game PvE, even though most likely you'll be called to be Resto if you're in a serious 
various raiding guild. The downside of Blood Fury is obvious, the reduced healing which lasts longer than the buff itself, and in hardcore personally gives me anxiety, so I found myself using it only when I felt completely safe, so maybe not the best pick for hardcore. Although I've never played a troll character because I don't like the way they look, the female troll actually isn't completely hunched over like the male, so I said, you know, I'll give it a shot. And I'm really glad I did, because the troll racials are actually insane. Berserking is one of my new favorite spells because it gives 10% increased casting and attack speed baseline, but if you're at 40% health or less, it actually gives plus 30%. So basically, I'm never afraid of letting my health drop because I can quickly use Berserking at 40% health, get a very fast healing wave off, and enjoy the Berserking bonus for the rest of the duration because it's snapshotted that 30% bonus at 40% health. So you just use Berserking, heal yourself, enjoy the buff at 30%. 30% feels very strong, by the way, and just imagine using that with Flurry on. It's 30% increased attack speed plus another 30 from Flurry. You're just poking people with that stick, man, going crazy. So, of course, Troll Shaman are considered the best race for endgame PvE restoration because of Berserking, of course. Now, when it comes to Torin, I truly think they are top tier for hardcore, especially for PvP. I mean, War Stomp is incredible. Two-second AoE stun that can be casted in 0.5 seconds. This allows for a quick escape using Ghost Wolf, which doesn't get down to instant cast in vanilla once again, but it's also a very big help in a situation where you need to stun an enemy, whether you need to interrupt a heal, interrupt a spell cast, Earth Shock is on cooldown, or maybe you just want to minimize your damage, you aggroed multiple mobs. It's just so, so useful. Shaman really just don't have anything like this, so having a stun is amazing. Not only War Stomp, but Torrent also have Cultivation, which grants 15 increased herbalism skill, which is really good because alchemy is one of the best professions for hardcore. Of course, the healing potions are great, but there are also potions that buff your armor, your strength, your max health, health regeneration, and so on that you can utilize while leveling. Not to mention Petrification Flask, Elephant in the Room. It's going to probably be the best in slot potion, saves raids, right? And by having your herbalism skill increased, it makes it easier to level up alchemy. So very, very nice synergy there. Also, as a Tauren, you get 5% increased health, which helps keep you alive. Now, really quickly, I want to talk about certain skills you can skip as a shaman because you definitely should not be learning everything. Gold, money will be scarce in hardcore. If you're playing a hardcore character, you're obviously not going to need resurrect. You're not going to need reincarnation. I personally don't get higher ranks of earth shock. I just like the rank one to interrupt spells and I primarily use flame shock as my DPS shock. I also stop leveling up lightning bolt because we're going to be meleeing monsters with our enhanced shaman. So there's no need to upgrade that to level 40. Basically, I skip most elemental skills, including chain lightning while we're enhanced. I skip sentry totem. I never found it practical for leveling and so on. So I would skip those spells if I were you. Save your gold. And in conclusion, this is what I would do if I were going to play a shaman in hardcore. Super excited to see everyone attempt to get level 60. I can't wait to see you guys there. Let me know in the comments section what class you're going to play when hardcore launches in just a few weeks. See you in the next video. Take care.